So David Thorpe yeah. coming to Goa since 1989. 1989. On the first package deal with a firm called Intersun. Intersun. And the first package deal, direct flight from I don't know where it was from, Gatwick. Gatwick. And it was on a, a narrow bodied 757, so one oil. Oh, horrific. horrific. One aisle and two seats on others either side? Yeah, yes, three seats. Three seats. Yes. And the price? Ah, yes. I only got the bill and it was. Oh. Now, thinking about it, our deal was two weeks. Yeah. One week at the CD go, down the corner. Yeah. Was, and the next week, Delhi doing the Golden Triangle. And the price at the time was £657. Which was quite a bit, no? Quite a bit. That was a lot of money, yes. A lot of money. A lot of money. It came down later, it crashed later. Well, yeah, as the packets took off. Um, and we came back again the next year, and it was the first time I've any gone, ever gone to any other country twice. Uh, and we just looked at it and we learned more about Delhi, because before we were shielded in this posh hotel. Yeah. And, you know, give you an example, a bottle of Kingfisher was 18 rupees. In those days, which yeah. was a lot of money. But down the road in the little bar, it yeah. was only 8 rupees. <laughs> and then we learnt. We learnt from that. So we explored more. We went from Donapur on a little ferry across to Tabasco. Yeah. And we got a steam train to Margot. And all that kind of thing. And we, so we explored the second year. And then, didn't come back then because we wanted to see the rest of the world. So the next time I came to India was Kerala in 96, which I enjoyed very much. And then we left the new thing. And I went to retire in 2000. So we didn't have the money to do all these tours. So our friends that we first met in 1989 in Sierra had come to Kanagir and been staying here for six months each year. So Let's go and see them. So we did. And we've been here ever since. What did you like about Goa? Well, I've always said, right from the word go, when I got off the plane, that first bit of drive from the airport was just something about... The something, yeah. something about, I don't know, just that magic. Uh, I was so interested. But then the main thing I think I like about Goa is the people. The people are so friendly, hospitality, hospitable. 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 Um, and well, to give you an example, after two years of not being able to come, I'm on a stick, difficult, walking up the town, instead of taking ten minutes, it took two hours. Because everybody, how are you David, how are you? Absolutely magical. People... Yeah. You, can't walk, you can't walk the road without being stopped ten times. No, no, we couldn't. So it, it was beautiful. And we've seen all the things that we know. There's only one man I'd be able to see, he's very sick, and one man that's died. So, all in all, it's been, uh, we've been here uh, three weeks now. It's been very hard, because we are suffering with my leg, I've had to go to the hospital, then that's sorted. Then I had trouble with the bank, they froze my account, that's sorted. So every now and then. After the pandemic, you've come back after a yes, two-year gap. That's right, yeah. Well, we were waiting for... We got a five-year visa, so they, yes. they suspended them. So as soon as I learned that that was restored, come, I needed to come and sort things out. I wanted to see my lady downstairs because I hadn't been for two years. All my stuff's in the room. I wanted to see how they feel and the, to assure them that we are coming back, you know. <laughs> so. So, back for you. Tell us about your films, David. Well, I started making films in 1980. I was always taking pictures, but mainly slides in those days. Slides. And then me and the wife wanted to go to America. And I thought, you need cine film. So, the man next door, who is now 97, lent me his mirror camera, which was a wind up thing. I see. And I took it, and I only take a few reels because it was very expensive. But when I got it back, I tried to edit it, I had to learn how to edit it. And then, of course, no sound. No sound? No sound, it was a silence. So I tried to 
do, my wife was good at commentary, she did all the commentary. Was that a mistake or was that part of the... Well, it's just the way things was. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she did the commentary, she put it on tape. But of course, it was impossible to sync. Yeah. So yeah. I just made some inquiries and I was sent to a man, not far away, who was putting a stripe on the film. The man didn't take. I see. And from that, he led me to other people that was into making movies and we went from that. So I've been making movies ever since. Yeah. How many have you made on, on Goa? Our friend Mario well, was done, telling telling us about. I've done lots of little bits, but the main one I did in 2000, which covered the whole of Goa, from the forts to everything I could, we could do. We had a car. I think I've seen that. Is it on YouTube? Could be. Yes, on YouTube. On YouTube. Then I did another one the same year, which I called The Magic of Goa, and it was all about the people working, all the people on the big buildings, and all the, doing the roads, digging holes. I see. Hands, all that kind of thing. And then in then with uh, people playing football on the beach, the Europeans having <laughs> fun, and the Goans having fun. Playing cricket on the cricket on the car park over there, you know. On the, the on the the car park, which car park. Is now, it was a cricket ground. And we filmed them doing that. Then we went to the carnival in Panju, bit of carnival. Uh, and that was it, basically. Um, then since then, well I've done last year, well, the last time was where we did Mapsa. Mapsa. Um, the market? I, I the tried market. to film it a different way. Because we know it's the market, but Maps is a bit more than the market. So I did a little research and I found that Maps was formed on a river, which most times are. So I sought the river out, the source, which I think it is the source. So we took a bit of that and, then, and we made go for some of the distinctive things. And then obviously the market. Uh, not, not very long. Then Han Jin, which I've shot many, many bits of something. But I wanted to do Panju. The old bits and the new were the big pictures on the wall, and then the fantanize. The fantanize was the main thing. So we made a short film about that. We was going to go, we went down to Myanmar, filmed all that, but I decided I don't want to do that. Birds of Goa? Birds? Birds? But, oh, no, that was filmed here, mainly on that balcony, from the garden outside, on a tripod. Uh, not all of it, some of it was taken up elsewhere. A lot of it was taken on the Bushnell camera, which is the what the trial, trial camera, you know, runs on batteries, motion detect. I see, I see. Uh, and that took eight years. Wow. Because each year a new species had it. But I haven't touched it now for four years. And then I made the same kind of thing at home. Sorry? The same kind of thing at yeah, home. Yeah, at home. At my, at my, at my life, yeah. Which part of Britain that is? In which part of Britain? It's in the Midlands. Midlands. Yeah. A place called Brown Hills. Brown Hills. Yeah. It's an old mining town. An old? Mining. Mining town. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. You haven't pulled mine. Please. So David, you've seen Goa change. You've seen Goa change. You've seen Goa change quite a bit. Oh yeah. I mean As you said earlier, too much? Well well when we first came, I mean obviously I didn't know much. I would say by 2000 and 2001, when we bought a car, uh, I was able to travel around and we even went into Manarasta. Uh, I found, I searched for all the forts, every fort in Goa I found. I had a quick look at, film, but some of them nothing to take. Uh, Rishma Gas, when we first went up there, we had to climb through a window and get in at the back. Climb through? Through the window. Window? Yeah, because it's all been restored now. Yeah. Uh, this is where? This is which fort you're talking about? Rish Magash. Rish Magash, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was all in ruin. Right. And we had to get through it. Okay. Window. Okay, so, okay. So we did all that kind of thing. Um, well, and then. It's hard to say, really. Yeah. Everything was just good, and the little, yeah, I like, like the same as my friend here. He likes the little bars, and we like the going bars. But that's all it was, and which was good, and everybody was very friendly. And it wasn't too... It was a small place, it wasn't crowded, it wasn't so crowded. And well, it was nice, it was simple, Yeah. no trouble. And then it wasn't until, I would say, 2005, the year this tsunami, 
to our five, to our six. We've got many more tourists coming in, British tourists, which we call now, we shouldn't call this, we call the Spanish school. The Spanish? The Spanish school. Spanish? The Spanish school, the riffraff, the riffraff. Okay. You, you, do, you don't put that in the <laughs> you'll get me killed. No, the wrong type of people. Yeah. They, yeah. All they was interested in was the beach, beer, and whatever. Not interested in the people. Yeah. Say. Not all, but a lot. Yeah. And I think that spoiled the tourism. Mass tourism is, is, is a kind of a strange beast. Yeah. yeah. At some point you think you're controlling it, but it controls you. Yeah. And sure. you, you lose control of yeah. you know, its growth and direction. Well, I mean, in them days, we thought of ourselves as uh, travellers. Travellers. Uh, and whatever country we went to, we wanted to see how the people lived, how they ate, and everything. Uh, but then, as I say, later on, the tourists. I mean, they didn't have any respect for the religions, they didn't have any respect for the code of dress. You know, I mean, you see young white women walk up the road with nothing on. Well, mm. Not so bad now, and people don't care, but then it was wrong. Yeah. Uh, so I never liked that. And I always believe you must treat everybody, even the beggar in the street, with respect. True. And True. Babies, you know, so as a human some, being, as a human being, that's right. he, he deserves that. Some of them we know are scamming it, or, you know, yeah. but you don't know. So. I always say, you know, I have a certain, that's it, I've done my bit. <laughs> What's your basic uh, background, training and work? Mate, oh, work, well, I started work as a landscape gardener and then I joined the Merchant Navy. I see. And I did two years in the Merchant Navy and that started me wanting to travel and it taught me. Sorry? It made me wanting me to go to travel. Okay. And also taught me about the people of the world. And then after that, I left. I don't know why. And I didn't have a job. And I ended up going into a factory, which I didn't like. And then to finish, I got a job uh, roofing, you know, the yeah. industrial roofing. And then I finished, did all my working life doing that. I see. Which I made a good living, a reasonable see. living. And I see. So, say, two hours. Two hours, twenty, twenty, yeah, two hours, two thousand, yeah. yeah. And then uh, every morning, aching, aching, this is not. So I decided to retire. I didn't have any pension, nothing. Okay. And I thought, I mean, we skimmed and saved and we managed. I see. And we're still here. I see. <laughs> About your photographs of Goa, um, how many photographs? Well, is that many, but really, over the years, I've sort of took some away and I don't know what I've got to do. take a look to search. But mainly it's all on video. Mainly on video. I mean, I took, or well, if you go to, I mean, you can't have the public bar, Alex's bar, even the Fiesta, there's a big picture on the wall with everybody which I put on. I see. And I made a photo and did a montage with all the people in. Really? And I did. Oh, what people? What people? These are the. But all the visitors, all the people that went to the bar. Uh -huh. and, the and we did it each year. Each year. Okay, Alex is, is, he got the best example now, but that was 2020, of course, there's nobody in since. And if you've got to look at that picture there, there's... You know, Who's there in the picture? There's a lot. Like, a lot of people, all who, the, are, who are some of the names you the remember? Alex, the Alex and, and the Alanis and some of the fishermen, and then there's people from Britain. I see. Germany, whatever, and they're all there, you know. So they became very close, the, the foreigners and the locals? And well, I think so, yes. Yes. Yeah, like, I mean, almost like family? Uh, well, to give you an example, on the last picture we did, there was young Nevis, he said, we'll be doing a new picture for 2020. And there was, I think, at least five people that their wives or their husbands had died. I see. But he decided we must keep them on a bit longer. You know, they were taken away when we need more space. But at the moment, we had a respect, and he left them. We left them there. That was the reason. But of course, I don't think there'd be another one. Because this is up in the air. Who's asleep? Yeah. yeah. Who are the people you remember from those days? Oh, well. Any characters, any interesting persons, well, stories? Yes. Oh, if you. Again, if 
shouldn't really quote me. There was one man close, he was a German guy, and he'd been living here for years. And he used to go to a little bar in a car park called Leo's, and he used to sit there and then he'd come out. But he was a funny gentleman, very strict old school. And when he used to come to the bar, one was a pillar, he'd place his back, centralise it, centralise everything on the table so everything was equal. <laughs> <laughs> Did your proper German way, you know? Because we used to laugh, laugh at him. Yeah. But he was, a, he was a funny character. Um, I often thought, I don't know why, why he came here, because he was a bit, I want to say cool for us, but a little bit, you know, racist, like, you know. I see. But, off, but other than that, he was okay. Yeah. He was one character. Uh, well, there was loads of people like that. Um, some good and some bad. But most of them, you know, on the whole, most of them was pretty good, you know. One of the early visitors to Goa, Cleo Otzer, in the 60s, she passed away. She wrote a book on, uh, you know, called Goa Freaks. That is, of course, it's, it's predating the charters. It's yeah. actually the, you know, hippie yeah. tourist. And, yeah. Yeah. and many people thought that she was not authentic enough in what she wrote about Goa. I, I mean, there are different waves and there are different trends. So, you know, each one sees yeah. it as their own yeah. story. Mm. I don't know what to who 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 are the who are the most memorable local characters whom you came, came across? Well, it's, a, it's a man that lives next door. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen him because he, he was pretty sick. I see. He used to be a taxi driver, uh, and they're still these taxis are still running. Little man, he had a stroke. And his name's Sonil, and I knew him from the weird dot, and. I know it was even the second time I came in, my landlord down to Stanley, picked us up from the airport and we drove across this car park and he saw us and he come running after us. David, 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 welcome back and he got in the bank up there. I see. That is a thing that stuck there. It was a good, you know. But all of them, I mean, in the little bar where you just met us, that's not what it was, is it? No, no, it's not the same anymore. But the lads that's working there, we watched, is it like? I see. He, not the, the man that's running out of the bed. Yeah, he yeah, was a little yeah. lad. I see. Now he's there. And now he's a little lad, he's running the store. Okay. Which his mother ran. <laughs> okay. So all of them, and, and little Caesar, he, he was only young lad. All of them. Uh, so we watched them all grow up. And the same, the, the main popular bar, which yeah. is now closed. To, which one? Uh, public bar, it's upstairs. Okay. Shandikan was the man, lovely man. Beautiful man. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Beautiful I see. man. Really good character. I see. And his son grew up. His son was only like this one. Yeah. Cheeky little cheeky little son. I see. Really cheeky. Little. I see. But he's grown up now and he's took up the business because Chandakan died. And uh, he's running it. Well, he's, he's shot that, but he's opened a new place down Barrow somewhere. He's doing well. Well, except for the pandemic, of course. He's doing, he's doing well, and, uh, and it's good to see. You played football? You played football at any no, stage? No, I don't no? play football. No, never, never been a sports. Okay, no. okay. Like me. No. I like to watch a bit of cricket, but that's it. Especially when it's Indian playing England. <laughs> <laughs> so, any places you remember here? Any, any iconic places or, uh, you know, bars or shops or clubs or whatever? That's a difficult one. It's for me. I see. Now, I can't, I don't, it's for me hard to answer that because uh, places, all places, have all been great. I've enjoyed everywhere I've been. But any place you would go to many times, go back again? Well, if you're talking about bars, one was Bob's Inn. Bob's Inn. Yeah, and he sadly died last year or the year before. That was a good venue because it was a proper old and going bar. And that's where the story, which is. We don't think it's true, but there was a book written about uh, Lord Lucan. You remember? Yeah, yeah, Lord, uh, Lord Lucan. And it, yeah. And it was said that he played played uh, that gammon in there, but it's not really true. Lord, he's got a picture of him. Lord Lucan, yeah. I forget his name, was this British guy who went missing yes, all of yeah, a sudden. He went missing, yeah. And they wrote a book saying that he might have been in Goa. and. Right. but it, it wasn't. So, no. Okay. No. But it's a good story, good yarn. <laughs> Uh, uh, th having said that, a lot of interesting people did come to oh Goa. Yeah. Like I met, I met this guy called Captain Captain Crunch, who was a guy from America who discovered that if you take the 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 uh, 
25 pence or 5 pence, 5 cents yeah. whistle form for, that they gave it free to the kids. You could actually trick the phones in the 60s to get free international or national trunk calling. So he was a hacker. John Draper, if I'm not mistaken, John Draper. So there were many interesting guys. Of course, Charles Obraj also came to Goa and, uh, and uh, so did... Uh, there's, there's lots of guys. There's another story I can remember. There's one guy, he got a big beard. And he come with his cup. He was begging. But he gave him a smile. One sec, huh?